there's four types of editing that most people talk about, or four levels, we can say. They're proofreading, line editing, style editing, and substantial editing. Now they can go by different names at different times. One name that you'll hear a lot is copy editing. I don't like that one because it's really fuzzy. You can't ever tell if the person using that term is talking about style editing, which is kind of more broad, or line editing, which is kind of sentence by sentence. So if you don't mind, I'd like to go over these four different types, and then I always add a fifth type of editing that most people don't think about, and it's related to my profession, it's ghostwriting. A substantial editor will go through your manuscript sometimes 10 or 15 times before they even give you any real feedback. Um, they'll read through it carefully and they'll track every element of that book. They'll track the, the plot structure, they'll track the timeline, they'll track character development and growth, they'll track internal and external motivation, they'll track action and pacing, and settings and timelines, dates that you've mentioned to make sure that they are in order, everything. When the reader reads through, like you mentioned, trying to figure out those gaps where the reader doesn't understand how you jumped from here to here, that's what a substantial editor will do. They'll go in, they'll make suggestions of, you know, this is the information you're missing. Maybe chapter three actually needs to be chapter four because chapter three needs information that fills in a gap that you're gonna need later in chapter 12. You can think of the substantial editor as kind of the 10,000 foot view. They're looking at the book as a whole. Even though they're looking at every single little element in the story, they're looking from the top down. Substantial editing, you're looking at the whole book and how everything works together, how all the pieces work together. Style editing, you move down into a lower narrower focus. Style editing, you look more at, at a chapter by chapter or paragraph by paragraph level. So you've gone from the whole book level down to chapter by chapter, paragraph by paragraph, and you're looking for style consistency. You're looking for consistent perspectives. You're looking to make sure there's not a whole lot of head hopping going on unless it's just part of the story. You hire an editor for style edits and they go through and they see that it's really unorganized. There's some really glaring errors in there. They should come back to you before moving forward and say, okay, well, what you really need is a substantial edit before we go on to the style because there are some issues here. They're not focused on the story as a whole. They're focused on the chapter by chapter or the paragraph by paragraph. They're not terribly worried about the whole thing. They're assuming you've already taken care of that. Style editing is focused on the art and craft, the how of how you tell your story, rather than the overall picture of the story. They're looking at the words, the artistry of the words that you're using. So they're looking for the music and the pace. They're not so much looking for the story. So the first two levels of editing that I talked about, the substantial and the style, those are really kind of still in the revision phase of the novel. The line editing and proofreading are both more specifically editing because then we're actually looking at the specific words being used. So characteristics of characters are things that they're looking for. Uh, personalities, that's, that's another big thing. Has your character suddenly changed personalities? Is there a reason why or not? Um, the details of the settings. They started in a park at the beginning of the scene and they ended in a parking lot at the end of the scene and it's not the parking lot of the park. How'd that happen? Or maybe now they're in the cemetery for some reason, but they were just in the park. So, you know, how'd they get there? Um, that can be a problem. Maybe it's explained in the book, but maybe not. Uh, consistency of time passing and dates named. So something takes place on Monday and then two pages later, it's Sunday, and it's not the next week. But, you know, we gotta fix that. So you wanna make sure that your book's in good shape before you hire a proofreader.
Now, how do you feel about books that are full of typos? Can you read them? No? Yeah, me either. I have a really hard time. Um, now, if I'm editing a book, if I'm receiving a manuscript that I'm editing, that's a different story entirely. But a published book where I find a typo on every other page, honestly, I really can't get past page 10 no matter how good the story is. Anybody have that same problem? Yeah? So it's really important to hire a proofreader. And again, the reason you can't do it yourself is because you tend to not see it. I can't tell you how many times I've looked over stuff that I've written myself, and I'm like, OK, well, where's the two and the four and <laughs> the the? I just skip those little words, and I don't even manage to type them. My brain sees them as I'm reading it back through, and my brain fills in the gap without a problem, but my reader will not. Now, if you can't afford to hire a proofreader, you can try and do it yourself. I can give you a few tips on that. Uh, one, the very first and most important thing to do is put your manuscript aside and don't look at it. Don't think about it. Just leave it alone for a while. Now you've got your manuscript all polished. It's all pretty. It's all organized. It tells the story perfectly. You're ready to publish or send it to your agent or whatever. But before we move on to that stage, I want to tell you a little bit about ghostwriting and how that relates to editing. Ghostwriting basically starts the editing process before the words have been written down. It's essentially the same thing as substantial editing, except you're not starting with the manuscript. You're starting with the ideas in the author's head. Sometimes they have notes. Sometimes they have entire lectures written out. Sometimes they have chapters um, or a dissertation that they've done, done before. Sometimes they might have a video of a speech that they gave. And you're working from that. But you're working from ideas and not a manuscript. When you're ghostwriting, when you're substantially editing something, you have to have an outline there because you have to make sure that it follows what the author wants. It's not about you, and it's not about what you want to say, and it's not about how you would say it or what your language would be. It's always about the author and what they want to say. So when you're hiring an editor, you have to make sure that the editor also has that perspective, that it's your book, it's your story, and it's your voice.